Thank you. Uh, the next three items on my agenda um, are all lease agreements with local local restaurants. Um, and you know, as John Kaufman identified during our public comment, these lease agreements were from five years ago. Um, so Tony may be able to shed some light on the process. But they are Actually, now, do we want to get him to the point of discussion? Do you want to bring them forward? Yeah. Bring the first one forward? Because I can speak to this as well, too, a little bit. So, well, yeah, why don't we put the first one, the flatbed social, and then we can. So, uh, the first um, is discussion and vote authorization for the mayor to sign a license agreement with flatbed social. DPW is requesting the council to approve a lease to Short Alley to Flatbread Social for use of a patio restaurant with an annual fee of $2,000. This will be for a one-year term with the option to renew the agreement twice for a maximum of three years to coincide with the extension of temporary outdoor dining. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? I mean, just to preface it, you know, these, this use of space is I think an augment to the outdoor dining program to begin with. Um, it has been, um, there is precedent in, in as much as we have an existing um, a codification of, of a lease with um, the alley between Hattie's and what is now the district. And, um, and so it's long standing. Now the question of value I think certainly is always a valid one. Yep. Um, and so I think that's fair. Um, so that's certainly something that I, I think we could entertain as a conversation going forward, but we kind of worked off of the precedent of the value that was already existing. And the conversations on these actually predated you coming into office. So I just wanted to set that table for you. Right, right. Uh, Commissioner. I think, I think that there is, so I think moving forward, I would say that you know, I can provide a more robust process and transparency so people are, have a better understanding of you know, why are we pricing this? What are we pricing? Mm -hmm. uh, how is this developed? Um, I do think we should approve these leases. Yep. They are for our small businesses. Um, I think it's important that they have this outdoor space. Um, and I also don't think that, I don't think the goal of this is to, is to charge the maximum amount we possibly could to our, our local small business. I would agree with that because ultimately they're generating sales tax revenue. They're employing people. Um, they're in, in a lot of cases taking care of these lands that are that are not getting taken care of right now. I think the second one, the JBA restaurant, um, that's like an enclosed area between the Woodlawn Garage and the back of the building at Seneca. So they're actually I, that probably would have been taken over by uh, members of the homeless community at some point in time had they not been using it. So yeah. um, certainly a suitable use of the land. And so the, and so this one that we're discussing now is is for a one year term. So. To the extent I develop a process and we reevaluate collectively what should be charged, this will be up again. In Tony, how was, for instance, this one determined? Uh, as far as you know, I, I don't know. I don't know any of these specifically, Mayor, but I do know that the, the past 40, pl 40 plus years, uh, there has been a real estate committee. Uh, in the city. I happen to be chair of the committee at the present time. Uh, one of the frequent chores of the committee is coming up with prices to charge individuals who want to buy small pieces of city land that are really don't uh, they'll have no great value, but they're, because they're adjacent to a person's property, they have value to that person. Uh, it, it's far from an exact science, uh, but the real estate committee has been called upon to do that uh, now and again, and certainly it would be possible for them to, to evaluate this type of thing going forward as well. Um, the rule, of course, is that when, I mean, when a government sells or leases property, public property, uh, it should be for a reasonable approximation of fair market value unless uh, there are facts that indicate that the, but the benefit to the public in a particular situation is equal to or greater than what would have been attained on fair market value. And, and, and governments are, have a lot of flexibility in determining when that situation exists. Uh, certainly, uh, if you want to view this going forward on any time uh, to uh, run leases like this by the real estate committee for their review, um, again, it's, it's sometimes not an easy thing to do. Uh, some of these parcels that are being talked about either for sale or for lease don't really have a whole lot of value to the, right. to the, uh, on, the on the general market. They have value to the individual whose property they're adjacent to. So it's tough to put a dollar value on it sometimes, but the real estate committee certainly would be willing to take on that task should you choose to do that. They're already there for you. 
Right, and I think that that's, if nothing else, that will provide consistency sure. in terms of how we evaluate this. But I agree, like the Adelphi one and the third one we're going to look at is for a decor decorative railing. They're small, they're small so pieces it's of... A, it's a minuscule small piece of, of you know, yeah, value to anybody else. The, the Adelphi piece. actually exists underneath because of the way the overhang of the so building works. It's actually for land that's underneath the underhang of their building even. So... Yeah. Uh, sidewalks wider there. Yeah, you have another one or two that's a little bit more substantial as far as the size of it, but still, it's property adjacent to the renter's or lessor's property. So, uh, evaluating it for a, a general market value well, is, is not, the, as, not the easiest thing to do. No, but you, the Real Estate Committee stands ready to do that if you'd like. Okay, so let's you and I discuss that, and I'll, I'll bring ideas back to this council. No, it sounds great. I tend yeah. to agree, though, with the thought that, you know, we're, we are... The, we are essentially giving a benefit to a business that is then in turn benefiting the city. Exactly. And that should be a huge factor in terms of how we look at these things. Because the reality is, is you know, just where flatbread, flatbread social is, nobody's going to use that. I mean, Correct. right? So, right. you know, I'm, I'm not sure that, you know, it, it really merits – a heavy analysis because we're benefiting, the city is benefiting to a great extent f for these uses. Just maybe a good idea going forward to get those facts in the <coughs> record and maybe even to the license agreement itself uh, in, as, as you draw the next ones to come along. But it's probably just, just to recite those, those findings that right. the council's made. And so I think I agree. Ultimately, I don't mind having a process and transparency, but I yeah. think the philosophy needs to be consistent with this is sure. to help a small business and it really facilitates what we're trying to achieve. As Public health. Example. I agree. Okay. And I misspoke. JBA, the next one on the agenda is actually Hattie's Lena Lane. Got uh, it. Not Seneca. Okay. So let's. Um, so we're in number four.